the main thing that i want to convey is this concept of so called hard problems okay so what does it mean to say that a problem is hard right the simple thing as we saw in the case of sorting is that there are multiple possible algorithms to solve a given problem right so as we saw you know the, you could range all the way from the quick sort or heap sort which has a very uh, a, a fast order of n log n uh, algorithm in order to optimally solve the sorting problem right and in fact it is possible to show that in the general case it is not possible to do better than order of n log n right uh, so order of n log n in other words the heap sort and so on are pretty much reaching the best possible asymptotic complexity for uh, sorting you also have simpler algorithms such as the insertion sort or the selection sort Right, the kind of example that we looked at, which is order of n squared, very easy to visualize and uh, code, and a reasonable performance. Although n log n will be far better than n square for large values of n. Typically, when n starts hitting like you know thousands or millions, right? Not for like tens or twenties, hundreds, things like that. Uh, and of course, we also had the uh, sort of pathologically bad algorithm which is enumerate all possibilities and pick the one which is sorted right it's still an algorithm it will give you the correct solution just that it has a very poor running time so what this means is there are multiple possible algorithms in general to solve any given problem so what do we do about that the problem uh, the in the case of hard so called hard problems what we are saying is even the best possible solution that we can find has at least exponential complexity what is exponential exponential means 2 power n 3 power n or in general k power n right and in fact factorial is even worse so we are not even looking at that right so factor if if the best algorithm that you can come up with for a given problem has factorial running time in the size of the input then that's really bad it's even worse than exponential okay so in other words one way to think about it is if you are talking about sort of you know optimizing some solution and the only approach that you can think of is enumerate all possibilities right then you are pretty much looking at a permutation combination type of problem which means the number of options you have is most likely factorial right which is which means it's a really bad uh, algorithm in general now on the other hand there could be a situation where if i give you a candidate solution you can verify the solution efficiently okay so an example of this is you know for sorting for example if there was some magic genie that said okay you know these are possible sorted solutions can you look through them and uh, can you look at a given solution and tell me whether it's correct or not okay so in such a situation for example a genie that generated all permutations in parallel right and asked you to sort of run through all of them in parallel and verify whether they are actually in sorted order or not the verification that is this actually sorted or not is very easy to do you just have to check whether there is a violation of the sorting condition right so this magical genie that can do a large number of things in parallel right would actually be able to solve this problem in a polynomial amount of time because you can verify in polynomial time right similarly for the graph coloring problem for example if i was to say that look this is a possible coloring of the graph right all that you have to go is look at all the edges and check whether there is a violation of the graph coloring constraint any two vertices that are joined by an edge should not have the same color right that is just proportional to the number of edges i need to look at each edge once and tell whether or not there is a violation on it okay so verifying a solution to the graph coloring problem is very easy right now what that means is a non deterministic computer right a non deterministic computer basically meaning that something which has no limit on how many different options it can consider in parallel right will be able to solve such even these hard problems in very efficient manner in a polynomial time okay 
So that essentially leads us to, then this is again from the realm of complexity theory. There is this concept of NP, which basically says that, well, P is the class of problems that have known polynomial time solutions, sorting, uh, finding the median of a set of numbers, uh, uh, finding critical path uh, in a directed acyclic graph, finding the shortest path in a, gra in a general graph. All of those are problems in P. Whereas, non-deterministic polynomial acceptable, that is what NP stands for. It does not mean non-polynomial. This, you know, very often people tend to say non-polynomial. It does not mean that. What it actually means is, NP is a superset of P, right? And what it means is that a problem that is in NP can be verified in polynomial time. So that includes problems like sorting and uh, shortest paths and so on, right? If I give you a candidate solution for sorting, you can verify it in polynomial time. You could also have solved it in polynomial time to start with. Okay. So P and NP are two classes of problems. They are sets of problems. Okay. Now, the issue that was discovered around 40, 45 years, uh, 40 to 50 years back was that there are some problems in NP that don't seem to have any polynomial solutions. Right? In other words, you can verify their uh, solutions quickly, but nobody has been able to actually give an algorithm that can actually solve them in polynomial time. Graph coloring was an example, right? And NP hard is a slightly tricky concept. I'm just going to state it over here and pretty much move on. What it says is that all problems that are known to be in NP can be reduced to this problem. That is to say, if a problem is, if you, if you say that a problem is NP hard, effectively what you are saying is all other problems in NP can be reduced to this problem. Meaning that if you can solve this problem, you can solve all other problems in NP in polynomial time. Okay, which basically means it is at least as hard as the hardest problems in NP. Okay. Now, why this is relevant? I mean, the sort of follow up of this NP and P was that it led to an identification of certain types of problems where people said, look, these problems we know are at least as hard as the hardest problems in NP and we have not been able to find any polynomial time solutions for them. Right? There are several problems we can keep adding to that list by saying that you know other problems in NP are, uh, are at least as hard or rather this is at least as hard as other problems in NP and so on. Right? And the bottom line is nobody has so far managed to find a polynomial time solution for it. If a polynomial time solution is found for even one of them, it means that all other problems in this can also be solved in polynomial time. Why this is relevant in our context is that electronic design automation, which, is the, which includes this whole problem of mapping DSP algorithms to architectures, there are many optimization problems, right? That includes scheduling and so on, as we will see later. Most of them involve searching large exponential design spaces and there are no known polynomial time efficient algorithms for these, right? Which basically means that it's, you can, with a good degree of confidence, say that it is very unlikely that people will ever find polynomial time algorithms for these problems, right? Which means that the study of heuristics is very popular in this context. These are basically common sense type algorithms. They are still algorithms because they, you know, fulfill the definition of being a clear sequence of steps. It's just that they cannot guarantee optimality of the final solution. 